his ring, is Abner. I believe that's our ring. I had no good long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Love and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum is progressing nicely as circulation manager for Diogenes Smith. He just completed a trip to Fort Smith, where he delivered another bundle of the pamphlets that Diogenes prints in his workshop back in the feed room of the store. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in their Jotham Down store and library. Listen. Are these boxes here big enough, Lom? Huh? Yeah, yeah, them would be all right, Abner. Well. I'll put them right there close to the door so as everybody see them when they come in the store here. Yeah, yeah. Well, now exactly what are these boxes for, Lom? You ain't told me yet. Well, they're for defense, Abner. Huh? It's an idea I picked up on my trip to Fort Smith. You see, two different stores up there had boxes set out where folks could put their old toothpaste and shaving cream tubes and old newspapers and hot water bottles and all such as that. Well, what's the store want with all them old things? They'll never be able to sell their customers old stuff like that, Lon. <laughs> they don't want to sell them, Abner. They give it to the government to be used over and over again making defense stuff. They do, huh? Well, sure. Them toothpaste tubes and shaving cream tubes is practical pure tin, one feller told me. Well. And tin's awful valuable to the government right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I reckon it is, sure. And, and they want hot water bottles, too, huh? Well, anything that's made out of rubber. Old inner tubes, rubber bathing shoes, the garden hose, and such as that. Government needs all the rubber it can get. Yeah, well, uh, we're we just going to have everybody in Pine Ridge bring all their old stuff over here and put it in these boxes. Is that the idea? Yes, sir. I'll make some signs and put them on there so those folks will know where it's for. Yeah, yeah. Put on there in big letters, victory boxes. That's what we call them, victory boxes. Well, good for us. We'll get them boxes full before you can say... For goodness sake, look at Cedric out there. Huh? Look how he's trying to walk like Dodge and he's now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got that funny little limp in his walk. <laughs> Swings his lantern the same way Dodge and he's does. Yeah, he's telling me he's trying to grow himself a beard just because Dodge and he's has got one. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. And look there, he's wearing the same kind of a big black bow tie. Oh, yeah. He, he thinks he's going to win that $10,000 honesty prize that way. Swan, that boy gets more curious ideas. Now, now, here he comes. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, howdy, Cedric, come on in. <laughs> wonderful world. Yeah, wonderful world, Cedric. Did you get to Fort Smith with them pamphlets all right, Mr. Lum? Oh, yeah, I made it all right, Cedric. Me and Mr. Dodge and he sure had to drive awful fast to catch you at the county seat and give you the right package before you got on the train. Well, it's a good thing you did catch him, Cedric. That'd sure been a good one on Lum. <laughs> Carrying a package of sausage clean to Fort Smith. <laughs> Good earn it have been a disgrace, that's what. More than likely it'll have lost me my job as circulating manager with Dodge and Yeah. How'd he find out I taken the wrong package? Why, me and Mousy told him. And I dog it did he get excited. Started rushing around here like a crazy feller. Did yeah, no. Oh my That's yeah. the way he acted all the way to the county seat, too. Made me drive my car so fast I thought we was gonna get wrecked. Boy. Well, he sure takes a heap of interest in his work, I'll say that for him. But what was he mad at you long for running off without the pamphlet? I don't know. He seems so glad he caught me in time that he never said nothing else. Never, huh? I reckon he was sort of put out about it. Oh, I imagine he was through the way he acted. I ain't saw him since I got back. I stopped by the store here when I got in last night, but he weren't in his workshop. No, no, no. He, he was over at our place. He come over there for supper last night. He did? Oh, yeah, me and him had quite a long talk there together. So what's these here boxes for? Uh, oh, them's our victory boxes, Cedric. Supposed to put all your old toothpaste tubes and old newspapers and stuff like that in there. Yeah, we're collecting that for the giver men for defense, Cedric. We start could collect some stuff. Well, wait a minute. That gives me an idea, Cedric. Mousy's out there just cleaning up the deliver truck. Why don't you and him get in the truck and go around and do some collecting? Yeah, that's a good idea. And then Mousy can deliver the groceries later on. Well, what do you want us to collect, though? Well, why don't you concentrate on hot water bottles this trip? Get them all you can. Hot water bottles? 
Yeah, like you keep your feet warm in bed with. Oh, well, uh, bed warmers, we call them. Well, some people call them that. You get a lot of them, Cedric, but the government needs all you can get. I know exactly where to go. We'll be back in about five minutes. Well, it'll take you longer than that, but get all you can now. It's a wonderful world. Wonderful world, Cedric. Now, that's the kind of workers this country needs right now. Oh, that Cedric, he'll go, yeah. Hope he finds some. Oh, he will. He'll get it. What was that you were saying about having a long talk with Dodge and he's over at your place? Oh, oh, uh, well, uh, after supper, Elizabeth and little Pearl went over to Sister Simpson to uh, study up something about first aid for the Red Cross. They're having sort of a class of some kind over there. And so me and Dodge and he sat there and talked for quite a spell last night. Uh, talked about what? what? What did he say? Oh, I don't recollect all of it. We just sort of vested there. To be honest, Lum, I'll tell you this. See, he's one fella I can't follow much of the time. He gets to talking there, and I jump the track somewhere or other. I can't keep up with what he's saying. Use so many of them big words, you know. He does use some uncommon big words. Oh, I never heard the like of them in my life. He did say, though, that he thought you was doing good work as a circulating manager, Lum. He did, huh? Yeah. Well, good for me. Said he hoped you'd be able to find the right fella to give them pamphlets to in Fort Smith. Oh, I found him all right. He did, huh? I'll tell you this, though. I never would have picked him out if it hadn't been wearing that little yellow ribbon in his coat lapel. He wouldn't? No, oh, he's just sort of opposite-looking fella than I expected to see. Well? Didn't look nothing at all like Dodge and he. Well, natural, I ain't no reason for him to look like him. I mean, he looked like a different sort of a fella than Dodge and he does. Oh, oh. First glance, he looks sort of like an unfriendly feller. Well? Fact is, he never talked much. Just give the secret password and taken the pamphlets and said he'd see me later. See you later? I is he coming to Pine Ridge? Must be. Or maybe I'm going to be sent to Fort Smith again. I don't know. I think the whole truth was that he's in a big hurry. He was, huh? Maybe he had to catch a train or something. Yeah, more likely, more likely. But I knowed he was really a good man, otherwise he wouldn't be spending his time spreading the message of honesty and generosity for Dodge and he. Oh, no, that shows right there what kind of feller he is. Yeah. Shows you can't never tell about folks, neither. Can't tell how fat a rooster is by looking at him in the face. No, 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 you never can. A rooster? Yeah. What else did Dodge and he say? Well, w was that fella carrying a rooster around with him in Fort Smith? <laughs> of course not. Well, where did it come from, then? Where'd what come from? That rooster you was looking in the face. Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner. Was he lost, just running around by himself? That's awful dangerous in a big city like that for a rooster to be walking down the street by himself. Abner, there wasn't no rooster there, even. Well, how could you look at it if it weren't there? All I said was you couldn't tell how fat a rooster is by looking at him in the face. Oh, well, of course not. <laughs> Naturally, you can't do that. Have to look at his legs and feel his back and lift him oh, sort of. I know all that, Abner. That was just a old lettered saying of mine. Now forget it. Yeah. What else did Dodge and he say to you? Why? Oh, Dodge and he. Oh, yeah. You know, Lom, he's a cuter sort of fella. You know it? What do you mean, cuter? Well, I just asked him. I dog his wait a minute. I know the best way to do that. Best way to do what? Why? just get some scales and weigh them, and you can tell how fat a rooster is. Well, I'm too good, Miss Abner. Honey, you, <laughs> Funny, you never remember. thought of that yourself, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I'm just stupid, that's why I read. Well. <laughs> now that we got that settled, what do you mean that Dodge and he's just cuter? Oh, well, we just sitting there in front of the fireplace and sort of rocking, and just to be polite, I asked him where he come from and all, you know, and he said he come from everywhere. From um, everywhere? Yeah. From the dew of the green fields yonder, and from the smoke of the factories in the cities, and oh, he named off a bunch of other silly places there. Well, them's are uh, symbolical things, Abner. You wouldn't understand them. Do you understand them? What else did he say? Well, I asked him where he's born, and he said it weren't important where a feller's born is what he's done for the future was the only thing that mattered. Mm -hmm. And he went into some more of them big words, and I couldn't follow him. I'll say one thing for him, old Lom. He sure got a heap of book learning, you know it? Oh, yeah, he 
Yeah, he's an educated fellow, you can tell. That. Oh, my, yes. More than likely went clean through the high school and college both. Wouldn't doubt it a bit. And he's traveled around a lot, too. Been to fine countries, even. He has? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't catch all of it, but he brung up about living in Austria someplace and in Germany and, oh, I don't know how many other places. Oh, I do know. He sure gets himself around awful. Oh, he has traveled, that fella. Yeah, doing all that traveling is more than likely where he picked up some of that learning he's got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he say what business he's in uh, whenever he lived in them burn places? No, but I reckon he's in the pamphlet business then, too, because he mentioned something about working in a printing shop as a boy and doing engraving work or something like that. Man, he's Wonderful got... world, oh. fella. Don't sneak up that away, Frank. Cedric. You scare a fella half to death. You ain't back already, are you, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Got a big load of them, too. Well? W where do you want us to put them? In them victory boxes? Yeah, yeah. Just bring them on in. How many did you get, Cedric? Got a whole truckload. Huh? Just look out there and see them. <laughs> well, good for you. Uh, wait a minute. What you got in that truck, Cedric? That looks like a load of rocks. Yes, Mom. That's what it is. Well, we never told you to get rocks. We said hot water bottles. Yes, Mom. I know, but... That's what we all is use at home. Just heat up them rocks and stick them in bed, and they'll work just as good as a hot water bottle. Wonderful world. <laughs>